make sure I'm recording. It is recording. Hello, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So my name is Stacy Christine. I'm here with the beautiful Sandy as well. And we are going to, well, I am going to be speaking about how I manifested five figures in my life last year, even during the crazy pandemic, even during the crazy times that we are in. So let me get started. Hopefully you can see my screen. And we're gonna present. Woo, let's go. So again, my name is Stacy Christine. I am a coach. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I am a powerful manifester. And I learned these things over a lot of trial and error. I have gone through a lot of ups and downs in life, but that is life. <laughs> but now it is my determination, my desire to have the most beautiful and abundant life possible for myself. But also I wanna share with all of you beautiful people that are watching this video too. So today we're gonna to discuss how I manifested five figures last year. Last year was crazy for everybody. 2020 was an unprecedented time, but uh, you are here now. Um, you are alive. You are, I'm praying that you are healthy. And um, what I've been saying most of last year was if you're still here, you're chosen. You're chosen to be here. You're chosen to make an impact. And you're chosen to actually live a life that you deserve. And manifestation is part of you being able to have that choice of having the life that you deserve. So let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so if you're on this call, let me know if this is you, if you're an aspiring or new entrepreneur, affiliate marketer or multi-level marketing um, person, if you've been laid off due to the COVID and you are looking for something that's recession proof, if you are a service provider, maybe you've done hair, makeup, nails, lashes, microblading. Uh, those are all of the things that I used to do. <laughs> That's why I named them. <laughs> um, or if you're a stay-at-home mom, influencer, or content creator, this call, this webinar is for you. So who am I, Stacey Christine? I have always, always, always wanted to have more. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest on this call because I honestly have never really shared my full story with anybody, um, but I came from a life of abuse. I came from a life of having a mother who didn't love herself and turned, put a lot of negativity on me, not only myself, but also my sister, um, but she also uh, physically abused me. So in my mind, I thought that love was something that should be painful, something that could be um, not as loving as like, you know, they show on the movies and television. So that's kind of what ended up me doing what I've gone through. Um, and so when on the, the picture on the left is basically when I was 15 years old and I actually became a manager of Subway Sandwich Shop. So <laughs> the, the food that's in my hand is a nice little sub. Um, I, I wanted to get away from my mom. I wanted to get away from her negativity. I wanted to get away from her abuse. So when I was a senior, they said that you can go on, it's not work release, I think that's prison, but <laughs> you could go on like a work program. So as long as your parent approves, the school approves, and the job approves, you could start working and you would only have to work a half a day. Uh, um, excuse me, you would only have to go to school for a half a day. So that's what I did. I put myself to work. Oh, <laughs> another reason why I wanted to work was uh, my mom was never, ever good at money. Never, ever good at money. She was a registered nurse. She did make very good money, but she also had um, certain patterns of having the nicer and finer things. And so she didn't pay her bills on time. And at that time I had a boo and I wanted to speak to my boo. <laughs> and she told me that her phone was about to be cut off the house phone. Cause there was no cell phones at this time. I'm not even gonna tell you what year it was, but there was no cell phones at this time. 
And so the house phone was going to get cut off. And I was like, oh, no, I need to figure out something so that I can make sure that I can pay these bills for my mama so I can always speak to my boo. So I got myself a job. <laughs> and this is me at 15 um, working at the subway. And again, I always wanted to, 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 I always was a leader. I always had it inside of me somehow, some way. I didn't know it back then, but I did. And so that's why at 16, they made me a manager. And I worked there from 15 to 18 years old. So the picture on my right, that's me right there, is when I got into the real workforce. I mean, Subway was a corporation, but like the real workforce where it's like you're starting from scratch was here. I was in a direct marketing company and we actually traveled across the country opening up offices um, to sell in the direct market. If you don't know what direct marketing is, it's going door to door, you're knocking on a door and you're selling something. I was so shy and timid in this 15 year old picture that when I became 18, I had to break out of my shell somehow, some way because I'm speaking to strangers on a daily basis now. So I signed up for this direct marketing company. I actually first started off as administrative assistant. I was amazing at that but I saw so many people making so much money because I was like cutting their checks and everything that I decided to go to Atlanta, which is where this picture is taken at, go to Atlanta and um, open up an office with them. I was no longer administrative, so I was strictly sales. And it was an experience of a lifetime, an experience that I'll never ever forget. <clears throat> I learned so much about myself and about people um, but the next up, I'm in 2008, I moved to New York City. And the reason why I moved to New York City was because I became pregnant. <laughs> I was pregnant right here in this picture on the left. That's my son's father. I blurred out his face <laughs> intentionally. <laughs> but I, um, I, I came to New York City. I no longer was working for this company. And I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do with myself, excuse my language. So I, picture, I put this picture on here because this is in Brooklyn, New York. And my son was born right directly behind me. And then my first job in Brooklyn was actually across the street from where we're standing at the Junior's Cheesecake Factory. I don't know if you ever heard of Junior's. It actually became really famous to me whenever Diddy made his <laughs> attendees walk across the bridge to get him some cheesecake. Yes, that was my first job here in New York City. So it was amazing, um, but what I was eight months pregnant so I wasn't going to be able to do that forever so after I had my child I actually was walking the Brooklyn Bridge and I something came over me like Stacy you love the Dominican hair salons that are here um which if anybody's experienced Dominican hair salons they will get your hair laid and laced and at that time it was only twenty dollars so I was broke. So that $20 went a long way. <laughs> but I loved the way that I felt and how my hair was blowing in the wind. So, I was, so something came over me when I walked the bridge and they said, open up your own salon. So I was like, what? I didn't even know how to do my hair. <laughs> I did not. I did not at all. My mom is white and Native American and my dad is black. I grew up with my mom who did not know how to do this lovely African-American hair. So this crazy thought of opening up my own salon was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go with my my gut, go with my feeling, go with this thought that came to me. And on the picture on the right is when I was at cosmetology school, Empire Beauty School in New York. It was right around the corner from the 30, um, excuse me, from the Empire State Building. And this is when my life changed for the better forever. I finally learned how to do my own hair. I learned about makeup. I loved everything about beauty. I might have been a little bit slower than everybody else, but I loved everything about beauty. So for me, I really feel like cosmetology school was to help myself, you know, uh, love myself and love my beauty, love my features that I have, and, um, and hopefully help others love themselves as well. So next up, uh, that was what I did. I basically opened up my own salon with a partner at that time. That's that's our flyer that we had all the way to the left. And then that's me taking a picture of myself in our salon. And this salon basically, it, it, it was a dream come true. It really was. But it was the wrong timing for myself. I only knew hair and makeup. My partner knew hair more than I did. So I decided to only sell makeup. And it was a catastrophe. <laughs> it did not go well. I had clients, yes, but after a while, 
I couldn't pay my portion of the rent. So what I had to do was, luckily, I was able to elevate myself and now go to a location that would pay me to learn even more. And so I was hired to go to work for the MAC Cosmetics um, Studio, the makeup studio, which was the first ever concept store of only doing makeup. It was a salon service-based um, location, and it was an honor to be a part of it. I was with so many talented artists, and... Uh, Basically, during that time, too, I ended up getting married. <laughs> um, I found who I thought was the love of my life. He swept me off my feet after six months and we got after six months of dating and we got married. So my marriage was going and then my career was going with Mac Cosmetics. And but when I found out that at Mac, I sold over $80,000 worth of products to customers, and I was only making $400 a week. That's what, $1,600 a month, and I sold $80,000. The math didn't add up right. <laughs> so I was like, Stacy, you know what? You Now that you have uh, these traits, these, these uh, experiences underneath you, you need to take it all into your hands. So while I was at Mac, I actually um, went to Las Vegas and I got trained to learn how to do microblading. So my trainer to the left, um, her name is Neezy Baby. She's still killing the game in microblading. She has a location in Vegas as well as LA, I think even Sacramento. But I was one of her first students in her Vegas location. So I dropped everything. I brought a model. I got my brows done too. And I was like, wow, this service has changed my life. I want to be able to do it to others. So me being the entrepreneur that I am, I opened up my own salon by myself called Stacy Christine Beauty. It was located in Long Island, right across the street from Roosevelt Field Mall. It was a very prestigious area. And I was happy. I was really happy. I was making money. I think I one month I made $5,000 just by um, um, selling services uh, and doing trainings. And I was happy with myself. I definitely increased my income from working at the corporate job. However, I was like, what's next? <laughs> what's next for me? So to, to recap, I basically, I traveled the country training direct sales reps. I own two salons, one in New York City. Oh, by the way, the first salon with my partner was actually right around the corner from where I went to beauty school. So it was total full circle at that moment. Um, so opened two salons, one in New York City, one in Long Island. I started actually certifying women in how to do microblading. And I have a few testimonials of people that have actually changed their, I, they told me that I changed their life completely because of the training that I gave them, but they decided to do even more training. And now they're full-time entrepreneurs, which is amazing to me. Um, and then I created the Confidence Bootcamp. That was the first first course that I've ever done in my entire life. So when I created the Confidence Bootcamp, I actually learned about an underground world that was going on. This is 2016, guys, 2017. This was before Zoom was really a thing, before Zoom is now is like an adjective and verb. <laughs> so I found this underground world where people are um, affiliate affiliates of certain companies, or you are able to promote certain things like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And I found a certain freedom that I didn't have with all these other jobs or businesses that I had. I found the time where I could now work from home, which this is a picture of me and my son at the park. He's doing his homework and I was working on the computer. Um, I found time freedom and I fell in love. I was like, I no longer have to perform a physical service in front of somebody to make any money now. I now can homeschool my son. This was for homeschooling was a thing. I can now homeschool my son and be with him and make sure that he's where he needs to be while also focusing on myself. It was amazing. It was another life-changing moment. <laughs> so what I ended up doing in that business was failing again. I attempted all of the things that I saw these gurus doing. I had the tactics, but I lacked the tack 
in getting it together. And the reason why I lacked the tack in getting it together is because of my internal self. So soon, coming up soon, we're going to speak about how to get your internal self where it needs to be. So I was watching all the webinars, I was deconstructing sales funnels, I was joining email lists, listening to audiobooks and podcasts, and like, <laughs> like they're going out of style. And I just wanted to figure out how I could continually make money and grow while working online. I no longer wanted to be stuck at a job. I no longer wanted to be stuck at a brick and border business. So the next step is I'm going to give you the T on how to be able to manifest the life and dreams that you want. So here's what happened to me. I, I started inspiring other people, um, which made me think, okay, I got something here. I got something where I can help others. And if you don't know, in order to be successful, you have to be able to help others be successful as well. Once you start giving people the value in order to get themselves um, motivated, excited, and in the abundance that they deserve, the only way that you're going to have any kind of profitability is by helping others. You can't just keep it to yourself. So of course, I'm sharing it with everybody. And these are the testimonials that I received. I'm not even going to go through them. You can read them later. But I've inspired a lot of people in order to get their dreams to come true as well. So after my whole team crashed, I crashed. And I had to figure out, what am I doing wrong? What is happening? I thought that I was in this abundance field. I thought that I was in this career that, you know, you have an amazing group of people behind you along with it. But no, I had to realize that I had to get myself right first before I could um, have the life that I truly wanted. So the key to manifesting the life and business you deserve is to fall in love with yourself first. Nobody else. You have to be concerned about yourself first and foremost. First, it's God or your higher power, then you, then everybody else, okay? That one little statement completely shifted my mindset. You have to first love your higher power or God first, then yourself, then everybody else. I'm a mother, I was a wife, um, I'm a sister, a daughter, but I gave everything to everybody else around me, but not myself. So the next step to what I did was um, started loving myself. And in my first two years of falling in love with myself, I manifested over $23,000 in grants and extra payments from prior experiences. Like for example, I got into a car accident <laughs> and it was, I was in a terrible, terrible time at that in my life. I just left my husband who turned abusive, who was abusive physically, mentally, spiritually, everything you can imagine. And I got into a car accident because of all this negativity that was happening around me. But two years later is when I actually got paid for it. So just, I know it sounds like, oh, you got into a car accident, you just made some money, but you gotta really think about it. I didn't get my money until years later when I finally left my husband and this, 20 something thousand dollar check completely changed my trajectory of what I wanted to do with myself. So it's really putting yourself in the right position so that you can get it. And to be honest, like if I would have stayed with my husband, if I would have continued to live in a negative environment, I probably would have never got that check. I probably would have gave up on going to physical therapy and so on and so forth. So it's a part of manifestation. Okay. Um, but by 2020, I was actually in a new home, a new loving, caring, and spontaneous relationship. And I have a new found abundance and feeling that, you know, everything is going to come to life that I want. And I'm going to show you the steps on how to make it happen. So I manifested over $21,000 in multiple separate payments, like overpaid bills. Like I, years prior, I paid too much for a bill. So I started getting checks in the mail last year for that. Isn't that insane? Like <laughs> going through a recession, going through the pandemic, and you're getting payments from years prior. That's all because I opened up the abundance field for myself. And that's why even though one of the hardest years of my life happened, 
so many positives were happening along with it. So I created all this manifestation without having to post 24 seven or even without having to leave my house. So how did I go from faking it till I made it to an al aligned online business owner? We're gonna get into these secrets, let's go. So not only was I in the process because that's me. I want to help as I go, help as I go, help as I go. Um, not only was I able to uh, create an income, I manifested an income that I wasn't expecting, but I was also helping others do the same. So Jessica, to my far left, she took my confidence bootcamp, which is my first bootcamp that I ever did, which I did it in about 2018. She, uh, after taking my course, she manifested $1,000 online. She got a thousand dollar payment through PayPal. I was like, yes, Jessica. And then just a couple days later, I found out that Erica was able to manifest $3,000 to herself from her online ventures and offline ventures. So I was so freaking proud of her whenever I heard that. And then just recently, Miss Letitia here, she actually came to me um, and said, hey, my head is jumbled. I don't know what to do. Um, I knew her, I knew her since probably maybe 2016. And she said that, you know, she's a fitness trainer. So she was doing her fitness training and gyms before the pandemic happened. And at this time when she came to me, she was in Puerto Rico. So she was like, I don't know what to do, Stacy. I I'm used to being an instructor. And I was like, girl, you have all of these things, all of these tools in your hand all you need to do is use them for yourself now instead of for the gyms that you were working for. So I helped create this lovely flyer for her. And as soon as um, she posted a workout video on Facebook, she got an inquiry for a father wanting to um, uh, work out with his daughters. And she got, I think it was like $400. But for one session, when she felt like she was lost and dead broke, she got this out of nowhere. So that's the power of manifestation. So I don't even know what this says. Hold on. <laughs> Are you ready for me to give you the, the, the secrets, the keys to manifestation? Let's go. So first, you have to know that you are worthy. You are worthy of abundance. When I first heard that abundance is your birthright and it's actually in the Bible, I was like, Stacy, why in the world are you not living an abundant life? Why? I had to realize I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. I had to realize I didn't feel like I was deserving of it. So it takes a little bit, especially when you come from childhood abuse. Um, it takes a little bit to reprogram your brain in order to get there. But these are the things that, that can help you. So you wanna make sure that you focus in on the power of your word. So life and death is in the power of your tongue. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So how you speak about yourself, what you say about yourself, how you speak about others, how you speak about certain situations, all of that plays a role. So if you're just gonna chit chat and gossip about people, uh, usually gossiping is in some kind of negative form, nothing but negativity is going to come back to you. If you, even for a quick example, if you knock your, your foot on the wall when you're walking and you're like, oh, I'm so dumb, right then and there, that's broadcasting to the world that you are dumb, right? So how you can do it is changing the power of your thoughts. So right before I got on this webinar, I was Googling <laughs> this fact, but the we have 70,000 thoughts in our head per day. I think it said it was 46.6 um, thoughts per minute that goes through our head. 80% of those thoughts are negative. That's human nature, guys. It's human nature. It's not your fault. It's human nature. But it is your fault if you don't change this, right? So 95% of those thoughts are repetitive. So most of the thoughts that you have in your head, you have repeated in your head over and over and over again. One of my favorite books right now is Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza says that by the time you're age 35, you have a bunch of programs in your brain from when you were growing up. And it's usually a little bit harder to reprogram yourself 
um, by the time you're 35. However, it's not impossible, right? So all of these programs, these repetitive thoughts that you've thought from your childhood, from your adult teenage years, from your adulthood, from life experiences, you may have gone through stuff because life, no matter what, you're going to go through ups and downs. But with the power of your word, you can rethink about those things. What were the lessons that came out of those things that happened to you? What lessons? Failures are really lessons. They're lessons for you to learn to not go back in that direction and to move forward in another direction, right? So watch the power of your word. Watch the power of your thoughts. Positive thoughts versus negative thoughts. We've already discussed it. 70,000 thoughts in your brain a day. Um, 80,000, excuse me, 80% of them are negative. 95% are repetitive. So you have to make sure that you are balancing these positive and negative thoughts. Again, you stumble, you stumble your toe instead of saying, oh, you're an idiot. You need to start saying, oh my God, you are amazing. That was a little bit of a wake up right there. Let's keep it going. You know, like it sounds stupid, but it's really, that's, that's the simple. That's how simple it is to just completely change your thought pattern um, and move on to the next thing. Right? So positive thoughts. Make sure that you are thinking of the positive side of everything that has happened in your life. And every day you need to be consciously thinking positive thoughts about your future and what's going on, about even your family members, your significant others. Like, don't say, oh, my dog is probably going to piss on the floor. No. Say, you know what? My dog is trained. She knows to hold her pee in and to wait for me until I come home. <laughs> Can you tell I just got a dog? <laughs> I just got a new puppy last year. So anyway, that's those are the things um, for positive thoughts versus negative thoughts. The next one is affirmations. Now, anybody who's been following me a long time knows that I only speak about that. I always speak about affirmations. I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, but I don't care. Affirmations is another word for auto suggesting self suggestion, right? You need to suggest to yourself that you are greater than what you may feel at that very moment. And what you can do in order to do that is make it a routine to daily say affirmations in the mirror, look yourself in the eye and say, I'm powerful, I'm fearless, I'm a leader. Um, and also writing down your affirmations too, which I'm gonna get to that in the next point, but your affirmations is basically saying it's an I am statement and whatever you put behind I am becomes true, becomes life. In the Bible, God said that he, a lot of I am statements, but and all of them were actually true. So we have him in us. We need to do the same. So write out statements that you feel that you need work on. I usually tell people um, if you don't feel like you are a powerful creator, put that on there. If you don't feel like you're a powerful man manifester, put it on there. If you don't feel like you're love, you're kind, you're caring, you're strong, put that in there and say it every single day. Because remember, 95% of your thoughts are repetitive thoughts. You need to change that 95% to positive repetitive thoughts of yourself, okay? So affirmations are huge. Visualization is another one. So since 2007, I have been promoting vision boards. I learned it from The Secrets. I'm sure you've heard of The Secret before. And I honestly feel like I have my son because of my vision board. When I was younger, I felt like I could not have babies. So I put up a vision board in 2007. And in 2008, my son was born. No joke, no lie. So I strongly believe in the power of visualization. Visualization is basically, not only do you have that you to have something like this, I keep on looking back, but this is my <laughs> 3D, 3D um, visual board, vision board now. My mentor actually taught me how to make it 3D. And um, I still believe in the power of the vision boards. Oh, another visualization tool, trick, uh, exercise that you can do is basically, that's what I didn't put on here, meditation. 
Meditation is huge. You can do a walking meditation, right? Where your eyes are closed and you're physic you're walking, but you're picturing yourself walking in the door of that new business that you have. You're walking into the door of that new boardroom that you're going into in order to pitch this deal that you have. You're walking into that room of, uh, of a whole bunch of leaders and investors that can invest in you. And you're picturing yourself getting the check that you need, getting the support that you need, getting the promotion that you need. When you do that at home, it automatically comes to you. It really does. So visualization can be vision boards. It can also be you taking the step and visualizing whatever you want to accomplish right then and there. So that's visualization. Next one is gratitude. In order to have the amazing things, you gotta be grateful for what you do have. I strongly believe in gratitude journals. I get that from Oprah. Every day she writes down at least five things that she's grateful for. Um, and I think for me, writing down the things that you know you might take for granted, it really just puts yourself in a whole nother, whole nother space. Like, wow, you know, especially whenever you come from nothing and you get something, you're like, whoa, I remember saying thank you for this that I have, and now I have this. It's amazing. And if you continue, just keep on doing it, even more grateful, wonderful things are gonna come to you. So my new thing is connecting with nature. So during my time of, of not really knowing what direction I wanna go in from the beauty world and everything, I was researching and examining well, how, how can I live my abundant life? And I found a video, I think it was on Facebook, it was about grounding, grounding. So you basically, you go outside, you take off your shoes, take off your socks, and you feel the ground. You connect with nature. We are all one. If you think of the Lion King and how they talk about we're all connected together from the antelope to the ants, we are all one. We are all one universe. And whatever you put out into the universe is what's going to come back to you. So when you connect with nature and you're connecting with those feelings of gratitude, if you're connecting with those feelings of belief that you can have whatever you want in your life, it's literally going to just, ooh, you could just see the world just shifting for you, for you when you connect with nature. So the one is walking, being grounded. You can start saying what you're grateful for. Every morning I go to the beach and I watch the sunrise. Before the sun comes up, I start saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have blessed me with. Thank you for doing this, this, and this, this for me. I appreciate you for it. And also, when you think about nature, when you think about the universe, you also, back going back to the Lion King, when Simba was looking at the water and he saw his father and then he looked up in the sky and his father started talking to him. Um, your ancestors, your um the kings and queens that were here way before us, they're watching over you. You have angels. I believe in angel numbers. When you see 11, 11, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, your, your, your angels are watching over you. So when you're connecting with nature, start speaking to your higher power. Start speaking to your ancestors. And the key is shutting up. <laughs> Be quiet. Be quiet and you will hear them speak to you. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. I want you to try it. So try to do some grounding, maybe go to a park. Um, maybe I love the beach, going to a lake, being by water. Another thing with connecting with nature is hugging a tree. <laughs> you guys are gonna think I'm a fucking idiot, but I don't care. You gotta hug a tree. If we're all connected as one world, our, the trees have roots in them and they're all connected to each other. So it basically just means that we're all just in full circle with each other. Not only that, trees, um, they can absorb a lot, and but they can still live and they can still be here for their purpose. So let that tree, when you're hugging it, absorb any negativity that you may have in yourself. So when you're hugging that tree, you just say, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, Lord, I release any negativity that's in my body. 
I rebuke anything that may be holding me back. And I, whatever else you can think of, but those are the two things. Just say, I release any negativity that's holding me back. I rebuke anything that's holding me back. Lord Jesus, take this negativity out of my body. And thank you. Boom. Man, I've been doing that for like two, three years and it has changed my life, guys. It's changed my life. So try it. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to speak about is having boundaries for yourself, right? So you're doing all this work. You're doing your affirmations. You're doing your gratitude journal. You're, you're uh, uh, connecting with uh, positive people. But then you still got some little negative Nancys that are around you in your life that you just now you just have to push back from. So you may have to um, just cut off people. There's been so many people that I've cut off and it's did wonders in my life. There are also boundaries in your relationship, right? If, you, if you're with a significant other um, or even boundaries in relationships with family and friends, like don't let nobody run you over. When you let somebody run you over once, they're gonna continue to do it. So if you have to stand your ground and be like, no, I'm not having it like this. You know, this is happening for you, but it's causing this for me. And I'm not gonna let that happen. So if you can't change it, then we can't do this. It's, it sounds easier said than done, but it really is easy to just have your boundaries for yourself. You have to have your self love for yourself. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to uh, go ahead and take a little self-care day, self-love day. I just recently, whenever the Capitol got stormed, I was really upset about it, which you should not be even worrying about politics because it honestly has nothing to do with us. But <laughs> we're, we're going through a traumatic time here in, this, in these states. So after the Capitol was invaded, I was like, you know what? I got to get out this house. I need to take a break. So instead of watching the sunrise, I watched the sunset. And then I went and did a little shopping at TJ Maxx. And it, when, when I did the shopping, I, I only had a small budget that I, that I had to spend. I was gonna use the rest of my card, right? And <laughs> just to give you a little story, I, I picked up a lot of nice little things. And at the end, I saw this shirt, this exact shirt. And I was like, that is a beautiful color. I really love it. I'm gonna pick it up, but it was gonna put my balance over top, but I was gonna, I walked by faith. <laughs> I still went to that register. The gentleman was asking, do you wanna buy a bag? I was like, no, nah, I don't need to buy a bag. And then he was like, do you wanna uh, sign up for a TJ Maxx card? I was like, no, nah, I don't wanna sign up for no TJ Maxx card. And he thought I said that I applied for it already, but I didn't. I just went with the flow. I wanted to see if my card was gonna get declined or not. <laughs> so I went with the flow. He had a journal, it's my new gratitude journal. He was like, I know this isn't even in the skew anymore. He put the journal in my bag, in the bag that he gave me for free, by the way, because we had a little conversation about the TJ Maxx card. He gave me a free bag, he put the journal in the bag. When I went to go swipe my card, it was the exact amount to the penny. I, I, I could do the screenshots if I really wanted to, to the penny of how much was in my card, how much was on my card. And I was like, God, I need, you knew I needed that. You knew I needed that. You knew I needed that little bit of self-care, that little bit of reassurance. So whenever you do the work for yourself on a daily basis, don't be afraid to step away if you have a bad business day and go do something personally for yourself. Or if you have a bad personal day, you could step and go and do something in your business that, you know, can benefit you. You know, don't be afraid to do those kind of things. So boundaries is the last one. After all of this is said, I am letting you know that I am launching a course um, in order to help people manifest their dreams, but also monetize their brand online. I want everyone to be successful online. We are in unprecedented times and it's forcing us to have to figure out how to do this. And I've been trying to figure out how to do it for the last four or five years now. And I don't want you guys to have to go through the same mistakes that I've gone through. So I'm launching my course. It's actually going to be called uh, uh, Passion from Passion the Profits, How to Monetize Your Brand Online. But this is the flyer so far that I have. And the reason why I'm doing the course is because I want to be able to help more people do it. And right now I'm going to bring 
on this call, um, my lovely friend, Sandy. I, like I said, when I learn something, I teach it. So I was in the process of building up that self-love for myself and I wanted to share it with anybody who may have had questions. So Sandy had a couple of questions for me one day. She came to me, but I'm gonna let her tell her story. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> you can unmute yourself, Sandy. Welcome to the call. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate you. Tell the world a little bit about yourself and our experience with each other. Well, hello, 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 everyone. My name is Sandy Matherin. I live in Chicago, Illinois. I was um, beauty, the beauty business has always been my passion. So uh, I was always doing that on the side. I worked in the, I had a corporate job uh, making some good money, but I hated it. It was a lot of responsibility and I used to be in the office dreaming of when I can just do have my own business, but I did like the security of having um, a check and benefits and stuff like that. So I came across, uh, um, I came across a, um, a flyer on, on Facebook where they were looking for some models. And this was all the way in Jersey. So my whole beginning of process with meeting Stacy was about faith because I didn't have any PTO time left. I was trying to figure out a way. I, I just wanted to do like editorial work. I wanted to do whether it was makeup, nails, hair. I love the beauty industry. And I was working full time for a company that I could never get any time off. And um so I, I figured out a way to get in contact with John Blasting Game. I sent him a message like, hey, um, I do hair, nails and makeup. And um, I'd like to, at this point, I didn't have any reference sheet because I had went to beauty school and I was just doing hair and stuff on, the, on my own. So I, you know, he's like, well, who are you? We're looking for models. I was like, well, I'm not a model, but, um, I'd like to at least assist. I just wanted to get my foot in the door and be around the people doing what I wanted to do. So he was like, well, do you have a bio? And I was like, no, I figured, okay, I guess I got to get a bio. So that was, I hung up with him, put something together and that was still stepping out on faith because I didn't know how I was going to get the plane ticket there. Um, the room and board, like everything was just like, I just knew I wanted to be in the midst of this hair show and I wanted to be a part of it. So I, he came back and was like, well, we're not looking, we, we can't send for you or anything. We, are, we have our budget set. I was like, I will, I will just assist. I will do anything. I just wanted to be part of the venue, like what's going on. So um, he was like, okay. And I didn't hear from him for like a week or two. I was like, oh my God ended up he was in the hospital or something um so i came there on faith uh it's such a long story how i e ended up even getting the plane ticket to go um i went met stacy and i was just assisting i didn't know who or i didn't know anyone i'm just here from chicago they all had their eastern their like the east coast accents and i was like hey you know i'm here so my name is sandy and i love stacy's energy she was so bubbly she i just drew to her because some of them weren't that nice but um she was <laughs> and so i saw how she was managing everything she was doing makeup and so i i stuck to her and so the show ended up happening um what else happened with that one particular meeting the show ended up happening and i was assisting and i was called back the next year because they, you know, they were like, they love my attitude and my positive spirit. And again, they wouldn't be able to pay for me to come out there, but I'm now on the lineup. So that's the first part of believing. And I was doing some manifestation work, not even really knowing it because I would be at work doodling. Like I could, I would just imagine my name. Now this may seem silly to others, but this is what I wanted in my life at the time. So I would just imagine my name at the credits for doing hair for certain people like for any magazine i would just i would look at the magazine and just imagine it said sandy matherin <laughs> and so um the second time around i i did the hair in there and the person won first place so that was good stepping out on faith 
I connected with Stacy, and by this time, I I just didn't want to do my my I didn't want to do this part time. I wanted to do this full blown on. And I saw Christine just running her own business. So I reached out to her. I was like, you know what? I want to quit my job and I want to do this full time. And I remember she was like, don't quit your day job, honey. Like, <laughs> she's like, you, you know, you have to have a plan. And I was like, I'm just so sick of this job. Like, I hate it here. I can never do anything. I would get calls to do like commercial work. I, I, I started networking with people, but I could never be available to do these jobs because I was at this job. So I was like, I don't, she, she just, she probably didn't understand how bad I want to do this. So I'm, I quit anyway. I quit and I used, I had a little savings and um, I had this idea of if someone can help me and I can help them, I can really get my, my, my dream off the, the ground. So I had an ex boyfriend in New York and I thought New York City is going to be the place for me to become big let them know my name and everything I go there and it was a mess because I thought I knew this person he had control issues I, I and he convinced me to leave everything and come come over here I did just that and within a couple weeks I I couple two weeks I realized that that was a big mistake so I was in New York depressed because I quit my job my savings was like down to a very bare minimum like really like three hundred dollars I was helping him with his business the only person I really knew in New York was um Stacy so I was like you know I'm here on the east coast I had quit it's like you're not gonna do now I felt like a little like an ass a little bit like she like I told you like not to quit. And so I was like, yeah, girl, I quit my job. I'm here. And she was just like, well, she never said I told you so. She was just, I just remember her laughter is always kind of contagious. She was like, oh, hey girl, just, you know, I'm in Long Island, just, you know, I'm doing Michael Blady. And I was just needed to get to her. So I went to her and this guy didn't even allow me to just go on my own. And I just felt like I could foresee that this, he would be an abusive person. Um, he was abusive with his jokes and very narcissistic. I didn't even know what narcissism was, but now I understand his traits was just that. As I went to see Stacy, she immediately felt like something wasn't right. He was waiting for me outside and I almost like broke down in tears. She was just like, wait a minute. Um, so I, I ended up telling her well, what, what happened. And she was like, you got to get out of there. <laughs> she was like, because, you know, she was like, you, literally the words were, you're his bitch now. You're going <laughs> to, you're going to be having to be under his wings. And, she, you know, but she played it cool because he came inside and um, it was kind of like Stacy was an angel sent because <laughs> I was very depressed. I was embarrassed that I moved out there and I was just like, what am I thinking? What am I doing? And by now people are doing lots of um, watching videos, like tutorials. I, I, I just couldn't get like a, what am I doing with my life? Like, am I gonna be a hairstylist? Am I gonna do hair, nails and makeup? Like, I just knew that I did it. I knew what I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't know exactly how I, cause I didn't really foresee me being in a salon or a shop, but that wasn't my desire either. I knew I wanted to just be self-employed. So I uh, ended up leaving within a month. I came back to Chicago with absolutely nothing. By now, the little 300 went down to $11, one, one. <laughs> and I was like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I, I remember asking my sister for some money. I got to, um, someone ended up getting me a ticket to come back home. I'm back in Chicago and I had to start from the ground up. And while I was talking to Christine, I was like, you know what, I'm back here. I'm at my mom's house. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I gave up my apartment, gave up my car. And I remember her saying, write down a lot of the I am every single day. And I was like, is that all you got for me, friend? Like, <laughs> I need some solution on like how to fix this now, like today, like, or in a week writing, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and then she was like, just trust me, just start writing it down, you're gonna feel better. So I had my pen and I had this um, journal uh, and I got it from Marshalls actually. So it wasn't like TJ Maxx, but they're kind of like the same kind of thing. So it says, I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthened me. So around that time, that was Philippians 4, 13, and it's stamped and engraved in there. So uh, when I had this, I was actually in New York with the guy, but I didn't want him reading my thoughts. So I wouldn't even write in there. Um, and this was supposed to be a gift for someone, but I ended up keeping it. And so I started writing every day and I wrote down the dates. And the, the date that I started was like January, uh, January, 2017. And I would write, literally write, I am love. Anything that I didn't feel, I wanted to um, feel it. So I acted as if, if it was. So I would say, I am worthy. I am love. I am I just a whole bunch of a I am's daily. And so um, that's what I did. And then I, and I would check back in with Christine. And she was like, how's things going? And I started feeling a little bit better because I was working. I still didn't feel content. So it was like from, I was in a transition mode. So I was from the darkness, but I was still now like, okay, I'm with family, but I'm coming from having my own into living with someone who, um, you know, it, it was just not a good situation. So I just kept, imagining so now I went from the I am's to writing I wrote down I did an exercise my current reality to my desired reality and I can literally show you guys this is like so it's June 14 2017 my current reality is I said I live with my mom in a in a in, in a room so I had a room plus the hair room downstairs and I was like I, I worked at the JW Marriott I am these long hours I'm still kind of back into the same thing not doing what I really, really love to do but I'm getting little pay for long hours so I knew that I didn't want to trade service hours for money because it's like I'm getting tired I'm standing on my feet all day I want more out of life there's got to be more than this so my so uh, my desired reality was I love, I love the cities. The city lights does something to me. I love the lake. I want. I knew that I wanted to be like, that's what I wanted, and I want to be in a high rise. So I wrote my current, re my current state and my desired state. You got to see it to believe it. So I wrote, I want to be at least on the tenth floor. Uh, so everything I wrote down here and how much I'm making, I actually wrote it down. So there's so much power in writing things down. So not only like as Stacy said, not just visualizing it, but there's when you actually take the time to write it out and then dating it gives you such um, satisfaction when you can look back. Cause now we're January, 2021 and this was 2017. I now live on the 16th floor and um, my, my desire was to be able to have my own company. I have my own mobile spa. I got it incorporated. I started getting, I just did a website and clients, I never missed the beat with, with money. So I was able to do, get a vehicle back again, paid for cash in 2009, Nissan Murano, cash, I paid for it. So you can make things happen by following the principles but not only following them, it starts off with like believing, believing. So it all started with writing things down, believing. And when you get into alignment and it's like, God will send you to the people who, who you need in your life. And even the bad situations, you need that to be, it's like everything's like with a negative and positive, it's on one spectrum. So you're either leaning, when you're leaning on the negative, you can now kind of aim to look this way more on the positive. No, I know I don't want this side. I want to go towards the positive and towards the light. So don't even, don't count the negatives as, oh, it's such terrible. We need those things because when you come out untouched, like if you know some stories in the Bible, like um, in Daniel and the lion's den, you could come out untouched, unscratched. You know, you might get bruised up a little bit, but at the end of the day, this is where I'm at. So I'm in a still in a transition and I look forward to taking Stacey's course because I want to manifest on a higher level. Now that I have this, there's Corona. I'm laid off from the, the job that I have. There's been, it's been a little bit slow with um, going to people's houses and doing mobile services in the beauty. And again, though, although I'm not working for someone providing services for money, I, I'm doing it for myself, but now I want to, 
I really don't know exactly what I want to do. So I have to start writing down what are the things that I like to do and how would I imagine, what, what would my daily day look like? What, do, you know, so I know what I'm able to do. I'm able to do nails. Um, I'm able to provide services, but as I get older, I'm tired of that. And I know I love to talk. So you guys will end up, I will share a story with you guys when I figure it all out through taking her course and I didn't want to be long winded, but this is my story. So this is now my new journal is be still and know that I'm God. It was a gift, uh, Psalms 4610. And this is where I, I intend to do the, the new work. Uh, on, so this, this journal is all filled up and done. That was one season of my life, but this is a new one. And I thank Christine, Stacy for everything. And um, I will be still connected to her and doing the work that she is providing for everybody. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> You're the best ever. I got goosebumps whenever you said, I am now on the 16th floor. And in 2017, you wrote down, you wanted to be in at least in the 10th floor. And look, he took you even higher, higher. <laughs> even higher than what you actually wanted. So it's amazing. I'm so freaking proud and happy that you were able to, to, to survive the, the abusive relationship and come out even stronger. Um, I'm so excited for your next journey. I know for a fact, my course will help you get to that next transition stage. And um, I also remember you telling me a few years ago that some of the practices that I taught you, you shared it with your granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. What, what kind of outcome happened with your granddaughter whenever she was doing that? Oh, uh, you know, she has more confidence. Uh, she would really... I would have her write it down. She wouldn't have a journal. So I had her do, put them in a, in a box, do her little affirmation and put it in the box. And uh, she just has more confidence in herself where I could see like she does her hair and she, she, I don't know why she just didn't feel beautiful. Maybe it's like she was being bullied at school. My daughter ended up moving. And um, so they, she's in a whole nother school district. But her confidence level is, you know, is, is, it, it, that's what happened. Her confidence skyrocketed and I got to do some more exercises with her so she also can go to the next level. I love it. I love it so much. I, um, one of my passions is helping women because us women, we share, we, we give, we, we teach the people that are around us the things that are happening usually. And so it's a trifecta effect of uh, everything that we're doing for ourselves. So it's amazing. I'm so, so freaking happy for you. Thank you so much for sharing your screen. Um, as Sandy said, guys, I am launching my Monetize Your Brand online business. Um, it's a course. It's a virtual course. Um, everything is going to be done digitally. We, uh, let me see if I... I don't even have another thing. <laughs> I thought that I had a screen that was going to go over everything that's going to happen in the course, but I guess I don't. Let's stop sharing and I'll break it down to you really fast. So basically, actually, no, I won't stop sharing because you guys, you got to see my face. You got to see my visuals. Uh, oh, I do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So um, the premium course that I created is basically monetize your brand online, turn passions into profit. And first off, my promise to you guys is that we are going to do some life-changing, monumental, self-loving, self-caring things. We're going to break some change. We're going to do some, create some generational wealth for ourselves and our family. Because um, it's not about us. It's not even about our children. It's about our children's children. God Put us on this earth so that we can actually help our children's children. So that's my goal in this course is to teach you guys more abundance, more abundance practices. Um, you're going to hit some milestones. I'm going to make sure that I am your accountability partner, um, that I'm going to make sure that you're going to reach each milestone that you want to accomplish. We have, I have methodology um, that I created myself because I had to think, what was it that got me through all of these hard times? What, what was it that helped me break my brain, my, my brain pattern?
from all of the abuse that I endured. So I actually have the heal method. Um, I can break it down to you guys really fast. Shit, <laughs> I don't have it on me. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still not perfect. I'm still cussing and everything like that. You know, we're, we're human. So every day, every day is, um, every day is what we try to make ourselves better and get better for. So the heal method is basically you first for the H, you have to honor your past. Um, the E stands for your energy and evolution, evolve for you evolving. The A stands for alignment and the L is leverage. So H, honor your past, E, energy and evolve, A, alignment, and the L is leverage. Those are the four things that I had to really tune down for myself so that I could get to the next level. But the only way that you can get to any next level is to heal yourself from the things that are holding you back. So we're going to go through that methodology hardcore, guys. That's the first thing that I teach because that's the first thing that everybody needs to know. You can learn how to do make this money here, make this money there. But if you are constantly living in your past you're, you're, and your past was traumatic, you're not going to get nowhere. And that's why I, every time I was leveling up, it was like something was bringing me back and bringing me back and bringing me back. And I'm over that. I'm over that shit completely. So we're going to continue to level up. Of course, we're going to have some kind of things happen in our lives, but we have to know how to just continue, have the faith that your ultimate goal is going to come true. So, and then of course, what comes with it is coaching. I'm going to be there one-on-one -on -one coaching every single week. We're going to be meeting with each other um, with a group and also one-on-one. -on -one. The reason I am doing one-on-one -on -one as well as group is because I wanna make sure that these policies, these principles are working for you guys. So um, when I do launch this course, you guys are gonna have the beginner's benefit. You're gonna be at the beginning of it to where I can give you guys my all, my all so that your dreams com can come true. Cause when your dreams come true, my dreams come true. So guys, what the <laughs> I want you to click the link below. I want you to book a discovery call with me. We're going to talk about what's been going on in your world. Where do you see yourself? Even if you don't see yourself somewhere like Miss Sandy, you know that you don't want to be doing this. So we're going to figure out how we can adapt with the times that are going on, with your experiences, and we're going to create something very magical. So click the link below. Let's book this discovery call and let the magic happen. So Sandy, thank you so, so much for joining. I greatly appreciate you. I love you so much. I cannot wait to see the next level of your life because what we're doing is powerful. What we're doing is amazing. And um, I'm like, I, I almost cry whenever you were telling me the things that has happened since we've been together. So I'm glad that what what I'm doing is helping you and we're gonna take it to the next level. Woo! <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining. Click the link below. I can't wait to speak to you. Have a blessed day. Let me make sure I stop.